You're the one that's got to live with yourself, you know. You're the one that's got to look those people in the eye. I have one more question. It's not that I haven't been listening to what you're saying. It's unrelated. Um, but when I took my purse, I had $240 in cash. And um, from what I understand, this thing over in the jail, they either you have money on your books so that you can get things like shampoo or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I would even need there. Um, but what happens to my cash? So, this is part three of um, our series about Jodie Arias, which we've called um, The Wicked Witch of the Weird. Good name. Yeah, excellent name. So that some of you agree with that. So thank you for all the great feedback that we've had about part one and two. And thank you to everyone that's watched. Oh, it's they've been great, our, yeah. our, our friends. Yeah, very, very much appreciated. In part one and part two, uh, part one was a telephone um, conversation. conversation stroke interrogation between Detective Esteban Flores of the Mesa Police Department and Jody Arias. Yes. Part two was after Jody Arias' arrest. Um, it was the first face to face interrogation between Flores and Arias. Yeah. Things did not go well for Jody Arias um, in that. So if you've not seen parts one and two yet, please go and watch them. The link to our Jodie Aries playlist is in the description. We've also put the link to our Chris Watts playlist. We have. Haven't we? Did a series called The Monster Without a Plan, which was 11 episodes and a little cherry on the top. <laughs> to add to it. Yeah. So um, please go and watch them. Um, and please um, comment on this video. Let us know what you think. Um, we will just have to just take a little break here because... We do believe that Jodie Arias is about to start strangling the cat again. And that's something she's very fond of doing, isn't it? Just remember in the winter Far beneath the bears Lies the sea with that, we'll give you our usual disclaimers. Yeah, first disclaimer, um, we are going to be interrupting this. We're going to be stopping it. We're going to be providing commentary on it. So if you don't want to hear us yapping, the link to the original unedited footage is in the description. And the second disclaimer... We are not detectives. We are not experts. We don't claim to be. We're not body language experts. We're, we're, we're not trained professionals we are just two ordinary people who just call it as we see it yeah and we we'll go go with the realms of does this make sense um you know is it something reasonable to expect that's crazy um yeah what's going on and uh, we also throw some salty insults jody Arias's way so if you can live with that that's fine right without any further ado let's get into part three shall we let's get into it Uh, okay. Well, it can truly be said that that's a head scratcher. Yeah, it could, but I think she's overreacting there. Yeah, I mean, it's perfectly possible to scratch your head while you're wearing handcuffs. You could even use the chain on your handcuffs to scratch your head, couldn't you? Exactly. Stand up for me. 
As I take these cuffs off, um, just go ahead and put your hands down at the waist, okay? You know, these, especially these types of cuffs aren't the most comfortable. I don't think they're really designed for comfort. Nope, they're not. Today's date is um, July 16th, and my name is Detective Rachel Blaney, um, and I'm here with Jody Arias. Is that how you say your last name? Arias. Okay, I'm sorry. This is just formality, um, and this is, you know, if, if I have to, you know, write up a report of, of what we talked about, at least I know word for word, you know, what you said, and there's no mistakes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's for your own protection or good that right. we record it. Um, and before we go any further, um, I need to uh, read your, your Miranda rights again, just to make sure um, that you understand. Um, you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? Yes. Anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand? Yes. You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during any questioning. Do you understand? Yes. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you free of charge before any questioning if you want. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the reason that I wanted to talk with you this morning, <clears throat> there's a couple of reasons actually. Um, I have been uh, privy to the investigation um, and uh, all of the evidence in this case um, and to your conversation with Detective Flores yesterday. And there's, there's really no... Um, let me say this, it's, it's obvious to me that, you know, you're not, um, uh, you're not our typical suspect. You know, you, you come from a, um, a good home, a good family. Your parents obviously care about you. Um, that was evident, you know, when they talked to him yesterday. Um, and you're a bright girl. Um, probably uh, more intelligent than you were letting on yesterday. And there's no question in my mind or any of the other investigators mind um, that you were the person that took Travis's life. So that is very very interesting. Detective Blaney has walked into that room and she's decided and she's told Jodie Aries that she's not going to entertain any I didn't do it talk. Okay where have we seen that before? Tammy Lee. Tammy Lee. With Chris Watts. When she came back in with the lie detector results. Yeah, she was just shut down every explanation. It was any, up with any excuse, anything to say, I didn't do it, I had nothing to do with it, she shut it down. Detective Blaney has come in and basically said, right, I'm not taking any any static from you. Um, you know, I know you did it, you know you did it, all of the team know that, that you did it. We're having, having no messing around, and she's established those rules straight away. Yeah, but also she's not even she's not dancing around it either. Oh God, no! And I, like I said, I'm I'm dying to see Jodie Arias squirm under her questioning. But what I need to know, or what I'd like to know, and give you the opportunity to do, is determine whether you know you're a, a cold-blooded, cold-hearted. Um, murderer who slaughtered this guy or are you somebody that got caught up in circumstances and things got out of control because I think that is what happened honestly and in, in looking at everything and all of the facts and in talking to people um, you know it, it I think in every person that anybody could be capable 
of harming another person. I think it's, it's in our nature, and, and generally most people suppress that. Um, but I think given the right circumstances and you know, the right time and the right place, anybody could be you know, capable of harming another person. I see that on a regular basis. Um, what I generally see are the, you know, the, the cold-hearted, ruthless types. What I don't see very often, Jody, are people like yourself that are intelligent and spiritual and caring. And um, so I, I tend to believe that it was an a, a incident of circumstance, if you will. Um, it looks as if, you know, this guy, Travis, um, you know, befriended you, you got into this relationship. And it certainly looks to me like he's he took advantage of your generosity and your kindness. Um, you know, one of the other detectives had described him to you as a player. Um, right, now we've touched on this in previous videos, haven't we? Yeah. We think, we think that it's six of one and half a dozen of the other. Because, firstly, um, if trust was an issue and Jodie broke up with Travis because she didn't trust him, why did she keep going back to him whenever he fancied a bit of the other, a bit of slap and tickle? Why did she keep going back to him and answering his calls? Exactly. I don't. I think basically both of them were like stringing each other. Yeah. Along. And, and Travis, you know, knew she was. She had a screw loose, but kept ringing her for sex. He. No way did he deserve to die. No. In no way did he deserve what happened to him. But he has to shoulder some of the blame in terms of stringing her along because they, like as you quite rightly said, they strung each other along. So it, the, they're both at fault. She basically strung him along by kept on going round there. Yeah, yeah. He strung her along by kept on calling her. I, I don't really believe that they broke up due to the trust thing. It, well, it wasn't anything to do with trust. Because, it, like we said, if Jody lost all trust in him, why did she keep going back to him? She was besotted with him. She was fixated on him. That's why she kept going back. And that's why she could never truly break up with him. Yeah, she was obsessed. Exactly. And I, I don't think that that's very far off from everything that I've seen. And I don't think there's a, a woman out there that hasn't been... Um, treated badly or taken advantage of by a man like that. And I'm hoping because you come from a good family and because you have a, you know, a decent background, I'm hoping that you'll be smart about things and make some choices for yourself to help better your situation. When this hits the news, um, and, and it will. It'll go to the media. Do you want to be portrayed as that cold-blooded, cold-hearted murderer? Because it, the media loves that. That's not, you know, that won't be our words um, or their words when they do a press release, but that's what, you know, the media will take a look at the facts and that's what they'll portray it as. Or do you want to be portrayed as a person that didn't, didn't mean to have any of this happen? It just got out of hand and you're remorseful. You know, which, which way do you want to go? How do you want to portray yourself? You're a businesswoman, is that correct? Okay. And you have a couple of different businesses going, right? So you're a smart girl, Jody. Smart woman. Um, you got to have a lot on the ball to be, you know, your own businesswoman and balancing everything the way you do because it sounds like you got a lot going on and a lot of juggling and balancing. You're obviously very organized, well read. Um, I would say well read but not organized. Not organized? Why so? Um, I just, I procrastinate so things, papers pile up and things don't get filed on time and um, I lose stuff and then I find it later when I don't need it anymore. You know, when I do need it, I can't find it. So, okay. just general stuff like that. Well, maybe you're not as organized as I as I had thought. It's, uh, 
So I, I try. I mean, I go through these periods where it's like today is devoted to organization, and then I'll get organized, and mm -hmm. it'll be that way for a little while, and I'll kind of let it slide, and then I'll have to go back and clean up again. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think that you know the reason you're here is I think that you should have the just at least one more shot at um, you know the opportunity to do the right thing. You know, you, you say that you're spiritual, or those are my words, not yours, but that's certainly what I got out of, um, you know, reading everything and looking at everything, that, um, you know, you have a, a some sort of relationship with God, or, you know, some sort of deep spirituality, and, and so did Travis. And um, it sounds like, you know, you you cared about what um, what Travis's family thought of him, uh, maybe what they thought of you, I don't know whether you ever met them. I met his grandmother okay. a few times. Were they good people? Yeah. And um, I didn't meet his family at his services, but I saw some of his sisters, and he talked about them a lot. And he talked about how proud he was, was of all of his brothers and sisters, because they come from a rough background, but they've all done really well. Mm -hmm. I picked up on this over the last couple of videos, right? And once again, it's jumping out at me again. His family. She's got something about his family. Now, in the first one, she talked about his family. Um, in the second one, she talked about his family. But I think that was more to do with um, what would happen if they found out he was like this sexually. Yeah. You know. But she's going on about his family again, and this time she's getting emotional. Why? I mean, I don't know whether it is real emotions or not. It may be faked emotions, but what is it about his family that is getting her so emotional? Because it keeps happening. Well, the thing is, she's getting emotional over his family, but not over him. Mm. Exactly. That's one thing. That's that, strange. That, yeah, that I can't get my head around. Because if he was such a dear friend to her and she's protesting her innocence, she should be in bits by now. Well, she should have been in bits at the first... Yeah, first you, phone call. Yeah. Yeah, she wasn't. I would imagine that keeping all of this in, I can only imagine because I've never been there myself, but I can only imagine that keeping all of this in is just tearing you apart inside. Um, it's not hard to tell that, you know, you, you have portrayed yourself as being very strong, but you can see it in your eyes, Jody. It's not like... You know, it's not that I'm in detect my my dad said that Detective Flores told him that I was just cold yesterday. And it's not that I'm cold. I'm just resolute. And it's not that I haven't cried. It's all I've done for the last month. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've got to go to work in part time and at my job I need to be a happy, cheery person. So I've got to suppress all of that and put on an act while I'm on the clock. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to get any more clients for my business, I've got to be an attractive person in my personality. So it's it's not like it's not like I haven't been grieving him since I heard about him. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you have an image. I understand that you have an image to uphold, and you have to portray. You know, that you're a together, savvy woman. You know, not somebody who's falling apart. So that's understandable. I but don't fall apart when people aren't looking. And when it's at night and I go to sleep, Travis always used to call me. Not always, but very frequently. So that's the hardest part is when I go to sleep at night. And if he wasn't calling, then I'd just call him. And sometimes I would just call anyway to just hear his voicemail. There you go. Straight from the horse's mouth. And I use the term horse um advisedly yeah obsession, or accordingly fixation yeah obsessed with him had to hear his voice before she went to sleep and if he didn't call her she'd call him or she'd call him anyway just to hear his voice obsession that's why she couldn't quit him because she was obsessed with him this is why i think this story that she's been giving about how the relationship ended because she no longer trusted him is a load of bollocks. If she didn't trust him, she wouldn't. Have, she she would have stayed away from him. No. I I will always say. I mean, we're just at the beginning of this case. Unless we proved wrong during the trial, yeah. I will always say she was obsessed with him. So 
so let me go back to you know the the choices that you have because again there's no doubt in anybody's mind what happened that day there's no doubt that you were involved that day that Travis died listen I know I, that I wasn't involved in Travis's death okay um, and but what we hold on what you need to decide is do you want to be portrayed as that cold-blooded killer Oh, that's what I was getting at. Um, or do you want to be portrayed as somebody that was taken advantage of and, um, you know, if things just one thing led to another, you thought your relationship was headed in one direction and it wasn't, or, you know, I, I don't know exactly the circumstances because I wasn't there, but I would certain, certainly think that it's to your benefit to appear as this is something that just happened, you didn't plan it, it was, you know, um, it was a heated moment, and uh, you didn't mean to hurt him. Because um, you didn't mean to hurt him, did you? I've hurt him very much emotionally, and I never meant to hurt him. Okay. And he said that so, I hurt him and, more than the death of his father. And I, I believe that. Um, you know, how, how are you going to come clean with yourself, you know, between you and, and uh, God, um, if you can't even, you know, look his family in the face and show remorse? She believes in God about as much as I believe in a four-headed pencil sharpener called Bob. I don't think that you're a bad person. I don't think that you meant any of this to happen. I think that things got out of control and you didn't know what to do and you panicked. And I would certainly like your parents to see that, your friends to see that, instead of the cold-hearted killer that the evidence is, is screaming to show. And this is, you know, at a certain point, you gotta, you gotta do what's right, you know. You gotta, you gotta make things right for yourself. Because otherwise it's gonna eat inside of you. You're gonna be sitting in that cell with all of this churning inside of you and it, it, it's gonna eat you up. And just because I'm a cop doesn't mean that I don't care, you know, about um, humanity and people. So at the moment, Detective Blaney is, you know, pre being pretty empathetic towards her. She's playing good cop, isn't she? Yeah, but it, I can't see it. It won't be long until she comes out with the bad cop. Oh, no, no. I mean, I mean this is a solo interrogation, so she's going to have to play both roles. Um, but at the moment, she... She is trying to get Jodie on on her side and, you know, saying, look, I'm trying to look out for you here. I think she's trying to make Jodie yeah. believe she's a friend and she yeah. can drop a guard and talk to her. Lull her into a false sense of security. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm not sitting here judging you. I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to give you a chance to, to make things right. You know, show the families that you do have some remorse. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll apologize for the things that you've done if that's what makes you feel better, you know, whatever it is. But when you continue to deny, 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 when it's obvious that, that that's not the case, you appear to be the cold-blooded killer. You know, there's... And the media is going to feed off of that. You know, when this when this goes to trial, the media's there. It's not it's not kept secret. You know, do you want to be out there in um, like the O.J. Simpsons? Because nobody felt sorry for him. You know, nobody um, nobody respected him afterwards. Even though he maintained the, his innocence. How do you want to How do you want to be portrayed? Do you want to be portrayed as the, the person that you are? The, you know, a decent person who's had some tough times and, and, you know, just didn't make the right choices at the time? Or do you want to be portrayed as a person that doesn't care about anybody or anything? So, a little bit of time after this, she gave interviews to three separate news networks. So it's very clear that the way she was portrayed, she did her best to control. She tried to. But unfortunately, she didn't figure on 
um, selective editing because these media shows, news shows, they will selectively edit the footage to influence the narrative or the agenda to go a certain way. Um, how many times have we seen that? Uh, quite a few. A lot. And it's still going on. So, you know, she tried her best to control the public perception or the image that the media gave out, gave out but unfortunately, wasn't enough, was it? No. You know, of course I don't want to be portrayed as a cold blood murderer. That's... I believe that. I believe that, um, everybody... everybody wants to tell the truth. Because... to keep that lie in... tears you up emotionally, physically, mentally. Um, I see that over and over and over again with people. And I believe that you don't want to be portrayed in the negative light that I've already... And I, I'm not making that stuff up. I mean, that's just reality, Jody. That's the way our society works. That's the way this world works. And things are going to start moving real fast here for you. This is kind of a pause you know, before things, you know, start getting heavy. This is, this is your opportunity to help yourself out. When the jury looks at it, those are the things that they're gonna be mulling around in their mind when they decide what type of sentence to hand out or when they make a recommendation to the judge. Those are the sorts of things that turn a jury. And the juries sometimes can be fickle, but I've, I've never seen a case with so much concrete, hard evidence. We don't need you to tell us anything. I'm doing this for you. Arizona's case goes no matter what. They've got a rock solid case. So what you say is basically irrelevant to their case. Not irrelevant, but it's not going to make it any better for them. But it certainly can help you out. How can it help me? I mean, how can what I tell you today affect the media? Um, you take control of the situation as much as you can and paint whatever kind of picture you want to paint of yourself. Nobody's going to believe that you didn't do it after they see the evidence. It's just, it is what it is. But it's a matter of, do you want to take control of your situation and paint the picture of who you are? Because you're the only one that knows that. Or do you want the media to to take the evidence, all of the facts and the information, and paint their own picture of you. And as smart as you are, you know as well as I do that the media doesn't like to paint warm and fuzzy pictures. They would much rather paint the vicious, cold-blooded killer because that sells. Am I right? So, do you want to control your situation? paint your own picture or do you want to let somebody else do that for you I can't believe she's still denying it yep she's still denying it even though detective blaney is saying you know we've got you we've got all this evidence against you you know your guilt is without question all that remains is how you want to portray yourself in the media she's not really if you read between the lines she's not really interested in helping Jody be portrayed by the media in the right way. She's more interested in telling Jody it's over. We've got you. That's the subtext that you've got to read between that. That's what I took away from it anyway. Well, she, I think she also wants her to tell her why she did it. Yeah. That's yeah. what is on everyone's mind. Yeah, but she is still stubbornly clinging on to, I didn't do this, I was nowhere near Mesa. 
which we all know is a load of crap, innit? I don't feel like I have any control over what the media says anyway. Well, you, you do, to a certain degree. You can have you can have the opportunity to tell your side of the story. You know, was it a matter of, um, like I said, um, this guy, Travis, building some sort of, what you thought was some sort of relationship, you know, were you, were you hoping for marriage? Because I've heard a lot of talk about, you know, possibilities of marriage, and, and I know that that is, um, you know, a cornerstone of your faith is marriage and family. Is this something that you were hoping for? Was he was he leading you down that path? Um, you know, did he take advantage of you? Um, was there were there promises made that um, were were broken? Did he betray your trust in some way? I don't know. Only you know that. But certainly, if that was the situation, they would look at you in a better light than if you just went in there and just killed the guy just because, just because you're a cold-hearted person. You know, the, the reasons, the reasons why are what's going to give you a better portrayal, a better light that you're portrayed in. That's why the reasons why are so important to you. And that's how you can take control. When you leave, um, you know, Siskiyou County and go back to Arizona, which eventually you will, um, whether you fight the extradition or not, it, that's just kind of a... Um, An inevitability. Yeah. Um, it, it's going to happen eventually. You're not going to have the opportunity to do this again. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I'm certainly, um, you know, not going back to Arizona. I won't have the opportunity, and and the shot will be gone. What is your role, though? I mean, you're just, you're a detective. Mm -hmm. um. This is our jurisdiction. Um, it's our county. Um, so, you know, part of this investigation, if you will, is is on us. Um, so I, I've I've taken an interest. Um, in this case, you know, I, I, I saw you and I read all this information and I'm like, man, the, you know, she, she's, not, uh, she's not the typical person that we see in here. Can I ask you a couple questions? Sure. Um, not personal questions. Um, I know I understand they took some of my stuff yesterday. Mm -hmm. Where does all that go? Go to Arizona? Um, it'll it'll be transferred to Arizona. It's held in evidence. There's a list of everything that was taken, and, and um, a copy of that was left at each um, location. At each location. And it was a carbon copy, so my parents couldn't read it all. My grandparents couldn't read everything. They um, told me some of the things, and some of the things were like by camera, for example. Mm -hmm. Which is fine. I understand that. My concern is other people. Um, for example, I'm a wedding photographer, and I just did a wedding on Friday, and. Um, feel bad for Brian and his wife Katie because those are their wedding pictures. It's all they have for their wedding. And I just want to know when they'll be able to get their wedding pictures. I don't know when. I don't know how, you know, th this could go on for That's quite a while. That's the only thing they have to remember the day. They're yeah. not going to destroy the wedding pictures. They're not going to get rid of them or anything like that. So she has brutally murdered someone that she has obsessively stalked and had sex with over the past what two or three years yeah. she murdered him in the most brutal way that anyone and degrading way that anyone could murder anyone and she's worried about wedding pictures for two of her mates she should have thought about that she should have thought about you know a camera being impounded and pictures being impounded yeah but why is she so concerned about wedding pictures when there's actually more things at stake here exactly you know and i i just take pride in my work and i guess you know i'm not going to have a chance to edit them and make them really beautiful like they already turned out really good but you know like photoshop i just do all kinds of neat effects and they just they turn out like magic and so it, that won't be the case this time but at least the, the hard, hard files are there for them and you know if they're not going to get them forever and ever it's going to suck for them but as long as they get them eventually they'll get them eventually um, and also my i think that you know go ahead um my sister 
I don't know what her problem is. I mean, she's far less messed up than I am, I guess, but she's she's in a program right now in Klamath Falls um, for till the end of August, rehabilitating from something. And um, my mom, we write her, you know, we like to talk to her once a week, and my mom is going to um, send pictures because I have on my, my um, external drive. I have a bunch of pictures of her and I that we just were doing this with, just taking pictures of each other on, on her prom night because I helped her do her hair and I helped her, you know, just take pictures and then I dropped her off and she just wanted some of those to have. Um, if she's all done up glamorous and she's like, I can't remember what I look like without makeup. And I uh, did a photo shoot with my little brother last week, and they turned out really good, and she wanted those pictures too. She doesn't have access to any of them now. And those are all family treasures. And I did that, of course, because um, it's for them, and it's, you know, but, um... Once again, no sad songs, no requiems, no sympathy from us. Whatever happened to those pictures was under her control and her fault alone. Yeah, but what she's also saying is irrelevant. Yeah, she's just leading Detective Blaney, Blaney on the same little tour of her marshmallow garden that she did Detective Flores the day before. I would have made her a CD, but my, my CD-ROM just wasn't working right. And I just didn't get around to making it because I didn't have the proper tools to do it. And she just wants those to mail to Angela. Well, see, these are the sorts of things that, you know, paint a picture of a, of a good, decent person where things just went a little wrong. You know, you showing so much concern and care. Do you know what happened to my journals, too? <laughs> um, you know, I wasn't there when they... I know they said they took one. I don't know if they took my other ones. Where were your other ones at? In my fireproof safe. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure. There's a... They have a hard copy, you know, an actual copy, um, an original copy. Um, um, if you want my journals, it, it documents the entire time starting from when I moved to Arizona up until two or three days ago. Where's that safe at? Is that it's at your... my bed. They said they looked oh, okay. through it. Um, okay. Well, then, if, if there was anything... I don't know if they know, felt they it felt was relevant, necessary. but you know, I'm it, sure there's Travis got a lot of ink in my journals. I don't know. It doesn't matter now because I know you guys think what you think, but... Um, it's not a, you know... A, the job of the detectives, um, any detective, is to determine, you know, what happened, whether a person, um, you know, is there evidence that would clear you, evidence that would convict you, etc. Um, we're totally neutral going in, and it's not a matter of, you know, our opinion and what we think. Um, it's a matter of taking a look at all of the evidence and knowing, and, you know, I think you're not grasping the reality of this situation. And hearing, you know, what your concerns are, you should be concerned for yourself right now. You should be fighting for yourself. Big wake-up call for her. I think it's the first biggest wake-up call she's had. Yeah. Basically, she's trying to say to her, this isn't going away. You're not going to go free. You are going to be charged for this. And I think um, Detective Blaine is absolutely right. Jodie has absolutely no concept of the trouble she is in. She doesn't. She seems to think that it's all going to just be, just get swept away. I mean, look at the evidence they've got against her, just that they've shown her, right? Anyone with that amount of, with what she knows against her, right? Anyone would turn around and say, okay, right, here's what happened. Right? Yeah. But she is grasping on to straws here once again reminds us of chris watts just thinks that, that she's going to get out of this by the seat of her pants um she's not gonna get out of it there's no not. way it's not gonna go away absolutely not there's just too much evidence against her this is this is not going to go away anytime soon for you jody you know you're a young you're a young woman um just starting your life you had a lot going for you. You should be fighting for yourself right now. There's really nothing to fight for. If I fight, it just makes if you me look fight, worse. If you fight, and if I if I give you some false confession, that just makes it look just as bad. No, so we don't really not. We don't want a false confession. It, that's that's absolutely not what anybody ever wants ever. Um, 
I was just hoping to give you the opportunity to show to show the world, to show the community, to show the jury, to show Travis's family that you do have a heart, that you do care, that you are a good person. And maybe things went askew that day. I'm I'm giving you scenarios with what happened that day because I wasn't there. I, I don't know, you know, the emotions that led up to it. Um, there was obviously a lot of emotion. That's very clear. There was a lot of emotion that day in what happened. And so I'm giving, I'm trying, it's like, it's kind of like pulling teeth here. I'm trying to give you the opportunity to help yourself. Um, to show the world, to show the community, to show Travis's family that you're, you do have remorse that you are a good person. And that doesn't benefit me in any way. I, I get no benefit out of this. You know, my, my job pays the same whether I'm sitting here or at home, whatever. I'm just, I was trying to give you that opportunity. And I, I asked if I could talk to you today to do that. Makes no difference to me. Not personally, but it sure can make a difference for you. And you let this eat at you, and it's going to destroy you or change you in a way that you wouldn't want. Okay, so there's something I've noticed about this. We're probably, what, about 30 minutes, 35 minutes into the footage? About that. Yeah. Have you noticed how in the previous day's footage, when she was talking to Detective Flores, she was all chatty. You couldn't shut her up. Have you noticed the difference today? D Detective Blaney is doing most of the talking and Jodie comes in and asks her about certain little things, but is not offering anything else. No, she's not offering to any statement. She's not offering to tell her anything. She's not being chatty or, or as chatty as she was the day before with Detective Flores. Now, do you think it could be because Blaney is a woman that she isn't opening up and that Flores was a man that she hoped she'd be able to butter up with her charm and feminine good looks? Yeah, and she knows she can't do that with a woman. With a woman. So do you think that's why she's not being as chatty? It could be, or it could be a little game she's playing. Could be. With the, de with the detective. Yeah. She, she could be like, sort of like pretending she's not as chatty, but really she is. Yeah. But just playing some game. I think she feels really, really uncomfortable with Detective Blaney. Whether that's because she's a woman or not, I don't know. But you can see it's oozing from her, the discomfort. Boy, she just doesn't even look at her. No. And it comes a time in somebody's life. There's always a pinnacle in somebody's life where you have the opportunity to define who you are. Do you want the murder of Travis to define who you are? Or do you want to take control of that and do it yourself? Everybody makes mistakes, some bigger than others. And I think this is the time in your life. I'm trying to tell you this is the time, Jody. This is the time to take control more than you've ever done before. And at least show the people that you love and care about that you have remorse and that you have a heart. Because when they sit there and they see somebody that's just stone cold and saying they didn't do it when it's clear to everybody that, that you did, that's what they're going to see as a stone cold person. This is your opportunity to change that. You can't change what happened. You can't go back and undo it. It's a done deal. But hopefully you're smart enough to realize that you can have a little bit of control of how you're portrayed. Now, 
this with a real motive behind Detective Blaney's questioning, right? Then there is abs. Let, let's just say for a moment that it is right, and she genuinely wants to help Jodie control her public image, right? Whether Jodie comes out and admits it or not, she is still going to be seen as a monster, no matter how well it's spun through the police department, through her lawyers, whatever. She's still going to be seen as a monster because of the severity of the crime. Because there were 27 stab wounds, mostly to the back. There was a slit throat and then a shot in the, a, a, you know, a bullet in the face. She's going to be seen as a monster anyway. You cannot polish a turd, I'm afraid. So why is she trying to control her image? If, uh, because she's... Because she's not. That is not Detective Blaney's motive. Detective Blaney wants her to say, okay, I did it. Just as much as Detective Flores. But the, this is like a tag team. Flores questioned her on the phone for God knows how long. He questioned her for like, what, nearly three hours um, the day before. He got nowhere. He figured, right, let's tag up, send in a new wrestler. I hate to use the wrestler analogy, but it's the best thing. You yeah. Know? He's tagged out. He's sent in his tag team partner. She's in and she's going to work on Jodie. We have yet to see whether she has any success, but we do know that Jodie gets, eventually gets sick of Detective Blaney and wants to speak to Detective Flores again. Yeah, we do, know, we do hear that. So we think that this was done very much on purpose to wear Jodie down and to get to see Flores, who is a familiar face and who she has created something of a bond with. Yeah. I don't think that you're a bad person. I don't think that you meant to hurt him. I think that you really cared about him and that you loved him. And that's why there was so much emotion in that day. I'm not sure of the circumstances, the conversations that led up to it. I can only see the result. I think that things got a little heated. You, you know, were angry or upset or disappointed, or betrayed, whatever the emotion was, and things got out of control. We both have betrayed each other, but it was so long ago, you know? Oh, we've, and we've, the last time we even talked about marriage on a serious level, was when we were still dating over a year ago. Mm -hmm. And the last time you know, he proposed to me once, he proposed to me a lot of times, but he wasn't always serious. He mm -hmm. just kind of said it, marry me, you know, as a joke. Um, but how did that make you feel when he said marry me as a joke? I mean, did you want it? No, and not after we had broken up. It was kind of like laughs. Like, it's really kind that he would joke like that. Um, we would laugh, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I took it as a compliment because it's when I did something that maybe in his eyes he saw me as as a good person. Mm -hmm. And so he'd be like, wow, this is a good girl, marry me. But it was, it was more of a compliment. It mm -hmm. wasn't a serious proposal. Um, you know, so marriage, I just, as much as I love Travis, I just have always, there's something inside that says he's not the guy you're gonna marry. So then what was it? What was it that, that led up to all of this? I mean, there's gotta be something. So I honestly don't believe that, you know, that you're cold hearted and you, you would just go and just, you know, kill somebody on a whim. It, that doesn't fit your profile. So what was it that that led up to that? You know, you, you tell me. You tell them. You tell, you know, Travis's family. What was it that, you know, pushed you to your limit? I'm just trying to fill in the, the holes there, you know, and just kind of guessing about the emotions. You know, what was it that would make you, you know, so angry or upset? Did you hear what just happened? Blaney asked her about what made her so angry that she would do something like this. And she turned that into um, an anecdote about marriage. And she, she, she did a Jody burst. That's what I call them, just yeah. these, these bursts of bollocks that she comes out with. I call them Jody bursts, right? She did a Jody burst of about 40 seconds about how um, he asked her to marry him as a joke and, and stuff like that. And Blade didn't ask her that. 
And then Blaney got her back down to earth and said, no, 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 you're flying off again. Come back down, come back down and tell me what got you so angry to do something like that. And she clammed up again. Jodie's very good at chatting when she goes off the subject. Yeah. But when she's confronted with the subject, she clams up. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what happened. And Blaney didn't even mention the word marriage. Not no. to my recollection. I mean, we went back and played it back. She didn't even say anything about marriage. No, nope, she didn't. Jodie thought, all oh, right, okay, well, I'll just take this and I'll just go off on one. And, you know, she t she tried to take Blaney for a trip around a marshmallow garden. But she Blaney wasn't, wasn't having it. it. Blaney doesn't like marshmallows, does she? No. And if you're smart, you'll realise that, you know, you're not going to get a whole lot of other chances to do this. Probably none. Once the, the wheels start turning, they move real fast. And you will be out of control then. You won't have control over your destiny, so to speak. Last chance saloon, buckaroo. You know, what about your, your spirituality and your beliefs with God? You know, if you continue to lie to yourself and all of us, that's one thing, but God knows. He knows what's in your heart. Doesn't the Mormon religion, um, want you to repent for what you've done? You know, I'm, I'm a spiritual person myself and I, I don't think that I would want that, you know, inside of me. I wouldn't want all of the, the ugliness of the lies inside of me. And I, I'm not going to sit here all day, you know, and, and try to convince you to do something um, for yourself if you're not willing to help yourself. But I just wanted to give you that chance this morning. It's, it's clear, it's crystal clear to anybody who looks at this case. There is no doubt in my mind, there's no doubt in any of the investigators' mind that you are the, spur the person responsible for Travis's death. It's just a matter of how do you want to portray yourself now, Jody? Are you the cold-blooded killer or are you a victim of circumstance? Was it in the heat of passion or was it calculated and planned out and executed? Which one is it going to be? That's how you can control things for yourself right now. I don't think you're the type of person that can sit there during a trial and see Travis's family sitting over there and continue to maintain that lie in yourself without it tearing you up. We do, don't we? Oh yes. And we don't think it would it troubled her heart or her spirit one little bit, do we? No, just like it didn't trouble her sleep either. No. I don't think I could either. You have an opportunity. You can't bring him back, you can't bring his life back. But you can at least make things right within yourself. And that ultimately is going to probably help out your situation. Nobody wants to believe, even, you know, your friends, I'm sure. I haven't talked to any of your friends, but I know that your family doesn't want to believe 
that you're that person. But, as Detective Flora said the previous day, her family were not surprised. Which was shocking. Yeah. I mean, you know, they don't want to believe it, but they're not surprised that she's been accused of this. So what does that tell you? Helps them understand what happened and why. So that they, they're not stuck with that, that image of you. The only image they're going to be stuck with is Jody in a big orange suit. Yeah, but does Jody have a heart or is it cold and ice? They know it's not what my heart is like. They raised me and they've lived around me forever. How about the rest of the people that just know you um, as far as an image that doesn't know you personally? Do you care about that? I care. How about Travis's family? I care very much about Travis's family, and I can't alter the way they think. They hate me regardless. It's true that their um, their feelings are probably always going to be negative about you. Um, you know, you took their son's life. They they can never get over that. I want to take Travis's life. It's clear to everybody what happened, but I was hoping that you were smart enough to realize the situation, the reality of the situation, and wanted to help yourself out. Whether you want to maintain the charade, which isn't going to get you anywhere, or whether you want to do the right thing. You're the one that's got to live with yourself, you know. You're the one that's got to look those people in the eye. I have one more question. It's not that I haven't been listening to what you're saying. It's unrelated. Um, but when I took my purse, I had $240 in cash. And um, from what I understand, this thing over in the jail, they either you have money on your books so that you can get things like shampoo or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I would even need there. Um, but what happens to my cash? Money. Jesus Christ on a hoverboard. What the hell is she on about? She... That is not the question she was asked. No. And Blaney is not the right person to ask about that sort of thing. She could ask the, the guard, whoever is guarding her at the jail. They'll be able to tell her that. What she is doing is trying to waste time again. Yeah, she's buying time. Yeah. As asking an unrelated question to the appeal... That no matter whether it's it's counterfeit or genuine, doesn't matter, right? But Blaney was putting an appeal out to her to say, look, we need to sort this out and we need to get you to acknowledge what you've done and, you know, try and salvage whatever public image you may have, right? And all she's bothered about is $240 being transferred to her jail book account so she can buy shampoo. She can kiss my buttocks. Well, it's... First of all, they count it all out and document it, so there's no question of, you know, what was there. Um, I can, I, I don't know what the procedure is. I know is. it's not really, maybe it's not your area or your responsibility, but who do I talk to about that? Because my parents don't have money to just keep doling out and, and making the collect calls there all the time or whatever, so. Well, I, I can certainly talk with um, the detectives and, and put in a request for you, and I'll do that. Um, I, don't, I don't go back on my words. Um, And I, you know, I, I don't know how much longer, you know, you want to sit here and, and listen to me talking, but um, I was hoping to kind of drill something into your head and wake you up and show you how you can help yourself. Maybe you're giving me more credit than I deserve for being smart. I don't think but so. I just don't see how any of that could help. What if it could? Wouldn't you want to do everything you could to help yourself? I don't. I think that my situation is hopeless, and I don't think that I can help myself. I'm sorry. 
you sorry to me? I just sighed. Are you sorry for what happened to him? Of course I am. That's awful what happened to him. He Did you didn't ever show me any pictures, but he showed me the carpet. It was pretty horrific. You know, Travis was very strong. I watched him work out a couple of times. It's super intense. Never, my dad has worked out all my life. He's been a bodybuilder, sort of, not professional. It's just always been really big. And I've seen him work out, but I've never seen anyone work out like Travis. And it's, he, he's just, you know, a couple times he was really into UFC, and a couple times he would show me some wrestling moves, and it, like, it, I was just powerless. Like, I, there's no, there's no way out of it. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to take um, a break for a couple of minutes. Um, I see if you still got some water. I was going to give you some more water. Yeah, if you could bring just one more, that would be nice. Take a minute just to think about what I said. And um, I'll leave you alone while I do that. While I do that. What the hell is she trying to do? Make a submarine out of the table or something? She probably thinks she's in some sort of bomb shelter. She probably wouldn't be doing that if she knew just how many suspects had farted on that chair. Right, so she's crying, or at least giving the appearance that she's crying. If those are genuine tears, what do you speculate she's crying about? I don't think she's crying about the fact that she killed Travis. Absolutely not, no. I think she's crying about the fact that she's been caught, the fact that she's never going to see the daylight again, the fact that she's not going to see her parents ever again, the fact that she's Travis's family are probably conflicted with how they feel but they probably hate her and she's probably yeah. upset about that because of the way she feels about them she's got nowhere to run to the the huge we said earlier on that it hadn't really hit her the amount of trouble that she was in and, and just the amount of um evidence that she had against it i think this is now hitting home to her and she now realizes that she's caught and i think this is probably where we'll see not right now no but soon we'll probably see her try and salvage whatever credibility or 
little credibility or defence she has. Um, and we all know that her defence changes more often than I've had opt in us. Jody, I, I'm, I'm really confused. I, maybe I did have a wrong picture of you. You know, all of this time that you and I have been talking, and I got information from your other interview. You are talking about insignificant things at this point. You're talking about money. You're talking about material things. You're, you're talking about everything, but. I'm just talking you're about, talking about that just, just people I care about. You're talking about everything but how bad you feel about Travis. You only respond to my questions. If I were Travis, about I would Travis. be very remorseful. I think that I, I've gotten the wrong picture of you. I think that, you know, you know, maybe I was wrong. Maybe maybe you are that cold blooded person um, that they're trying to portray and um, you know. I'm just really confused. I just, at this point, you know, I, maybe you're right. Maybe there isn't anything that you can do to help yourself. Um, you know, I, maybe I was wrong. Maybe you're not as intelligent as I thought you were. Maybe I was wrong. We think Detective Blaney had the right picture all along, but she was just trying to coax something out of Jody, which never came. No, just um, like it didn't in the previous interview. It's obvious from Travis's injuries that we're dealing with a cold-blooded killer. Oh, for the ferocious of the attack? Yeah. Of course you're dealing with a cold-blooded killer. It's obvious from her lack of empathy and remorse from the responses that she's given to both Detective Flores and Detective Blaney that we're dealing with a cold-blooded killer. She is a monster. Yeah. It's obvious she just said to Blaney, um, if I'd killed Travis, I'd feel remorseful. And she's not feeling the least bit remorseful for killing Travis, so we're dealing with a cold-blooded killer. Yeah. All evidence and everything in this case that we have seen so far has led us to believe that we are dealing with a cold-blooded killer with serious mental health problems. What do you think should happen to the person that murdered Travis? Um, you know, I've never been one for um, an eye for an eye, but they took his life. And even the Book of Mormon says that... Um, that, that that calls for the life of the person that took his life. Do you think that's the path that you're going down right now? And it's inevitable, so why fight it? Um, I'm not sure, kind of, but I'm not sure. I don't know where I'm going. So, tell me this. After looking at all the evidence, and what I think is crystal clear if you didn't kill Travis then who did I he was private about a lot of aspects of his life mm -hmm. he told me some things um, some things I got from some of his you know Facebook account email account or myspace or whatever because I had the passwords to those um, but I don't know, like, he would get, occasionally he would get solicitations, but it, I mean, he would always respond, not to answer the solicitation, but to kind of call a person out. And I don't know if anything ever came of those. Um, I don't know. I know his tires were slashed. I don't, I don't know. The question was, if you didn't kill Travis, who did? 
and then Jody went on a minute ramble about um, certain things that he didn't tell her and Facebook and MySpace accounts that she had passwords to. And she didn't answer the question once again. She didn't answer the question. No, she's trying to escape the question. Yeah. This isn't going to work for much longer and certainly not with Detective Blaney because she seems really no nonsense, doesn't she? She is. Maybe, maybe you weren't the person that did it. Maybe, maybe you just were physically there when it happened and somebody else did it. I mean, I guess, you know, that's a possibility. There you go. Once again, familiar ground. Very familiar. Yep, Tammy Lee said it's Chris Watts and he grabbed it with both hands. Exactly. Let's see if she does. Well, I think she does because then she formulates a defence that there were two intruders. So this probably is the genesis of that. Yeah, it's giving her an out. If that's the case, you know, help us out here. Help yourself out. You know, I... I don't know what else to, to do for you here, Jody. I'm kind of at the end of, of my rope. I was, <laughs> you're not going to get a whole lot of people that are trying to help you out along the way um, beyond this point. If you didn't do it, then who did? Because everything is pointing to you, not just pointing to you, but, you know, screaming that Jody killed Travis. And I thought that I could come in here and talk to you and talk some, you know, sense into you and get you to, you know, kind of help yourself out. You don't need to help our case out. You don't need to help their case out. That's a slam dunk. I know he showed me. And what I'm hearing is somebody who doesn't give a rip about what happened. I'm hearing somebody that's worried about money, your appearance, everything about you. I don't hear anything about Travis unless you're specifically asked. How do you think that looks? <clears throat> listen, I, it's, I don't care so much No, about you me. listen. Whoa. Hey, don't mind us, we're just getting popcorn for this bit, aren't we? Yeah, the gloves are about to come up. Oh, yeah. You, you are not grasping the reality here, Jody. You know, you're worried about wedding pictures and, you know, all this other stuff that is really insignificant. Well, listen, my life is over. Travis's life is over. I'm sorry about Travis. I didn't take his life. So what part of... We have overwhelming evidence against you. Does she not understand? Do you know what I mean? She just doesn't get it. No, she doesn't. But did you see how cold she said Travis's life is over? Yeah, very cold. Like it didn't matter at yeah. all. Yeah. i tell you something. If she had a map, a torch and a compass, she still couldn't find her own ass. All right. Well, I guess I was wrong. The reason I cared about those other things is because those people still have lives, and I care about those people. And I just, they don't know where their stuff is, you know? I happen to be in possession of their stuff, and so... All I know is all of the innocent people that I've talked to that have been accused of a crime don't act the way that you do. And you are acting like the, the person that I portrayed, the ugly, cold-blooded murderer one of the options that i portrayed that is how you're acting there is nothing in your actions that would indicate to me <sighs> that you're the victim of circumstance and you're going to be sorry you know when you get down the road and and uh i agree you'll probably be sorry that you didn't do the right thing you have an opportunity to do something right here I don't know what to tell you. Okay. We've got a question we want to bring up, haven't we? Yep. Some, anyone in, in out there, let us know in the comments if you know this at this stage, but where is her legal representation? Why isn't there a lawyer in the room with her? Did she even have one? Yep. Did she request one? I mean, she's, she's, if she can't afford one, she gets a public defender. Yeah, you do. 
right you get someone assigned to you so why isn't a public defender in there with her being questioned there should be yeah um any of you know let us know in the comments please Show me that I wasn't wrong, Jody. Show me what's inside your heart and not what's on the exterior. That's not grief. That is not even in the same universe as grief. That's exhaustion. Yeah, she's tired now. Yeah. She's getting worn down yeah and the pressure is starting to show on her and you know something it's actually a pleasure to watch knowing the the pain and suffering she put that guy through watching her now suffer emotionally is something of a pleasure to watch exactly help me understand why it happened and that it wasn't cold and calculated and planned because that's how everything points right now. <laughs> you owe that at least to Travis's family. Give them some closure. Because I know, just from working with all these families that have lost loved ones, that they're not struggling with who did it, they're struggling with why. That's what I've been struggling with. <laughs> Do you, do you not understand why you did it yourself, maybe? Is it something that, you know... Is it a part of, of you that um, came forth that you've never seen before? I don't know. I know Travis's family is struggling with why, and that would be the one thing that would give them closure. They may never like you, but I think that they would be appreciative of why their son's life was taken. You can't give them your son back, their son back, but you can at least give them the peace of mind as to why. But even we know at this early stage of us going through this case that that doesn't happen. She forces his family to go through the court ordeal. Yeah, and then she forces them to listen to a load of lies that she yeah. tells. Not just lies, but details that they wouldn't want to know about their brother, about their son, about their uncle, about, you know, their loved one. Details that they never dreamed they would hear about his private life. I know. Which should have stayed private. It should have, but it never does. But unfortunately, because this absolute oxygen thief wanted to preserve her own freedom Travis's Travis's private life got hung out to dry got reported by the media became a matter of public record and that is the very worst thing you could do to someone who didn't deserve it she threw his reputation under the bus yeah absolutely I know if it was my child, that's what I would want. And I know that you're not a mother, but all women have those mothering instincts within them. And I think that you can understand that, what I'm saying. And that's why you're hanging your head right now.
was I off base, Jody? Wouldn't you want to know why you lost one of your brothers? Yeah. I, I've never met them. I can't speak for them. But I would bet, you know, my paycheck, that that's what they're wondering right now. And you can at least show that you have a soul, that you have a heart, that you understand that need in them and do something for somebody else besides yourself. That's the least that you can do for them right now is give them an answer. Tell them why. That's how you can control something that's happening in your life right now. Because you have all the power there. That's a gift that you can give that family. If she truly felt any remorse, at least for the sake of the family, she would now come clean and she would say, okay, I'll cooperate with you completely. I'll tell you what happened. Then it would give the family some closure. But as usual, she's just thinking about Jody. Yeah, but also she's probably getting off on it. It wouldn't surprise, wouldn't surprise me. I think you're right. Wouldn't surprise me one little bit. She's that type of person. But she is trying to cling on to her freedom at the expense of everything else, even the expense of the truth. But the truth comes back and bites her, doesn't it? Very hard. Tell them why. Use me as the voice to tell them why. I just don't know why. Did one thing lead to another and it just got out of hand? And it's unexplainable even in your mind? Or did you have it all planned out? You know, was was he roughing you up and you just couldn't take it anymore? You know, was was he being violent on his part? He was only that way a couple times. It was before I moved. And people just I had bruises and stuff and people were like, Oh, is Travis beating you up? And we we're like, ha ha ha. And he got mad because I wore a short sleeve shirt, but it was like a hundred degrees outside. So, this isn't the, the perfect picture of a relationship no, that you've been trying. No, it was very rocky. No, I, no I've never I've once denied that we had our challenges. That he's said several choice words to me that weren't nice and, you know, but he's not the only person that's ever done that. My, my own father has done that. Yeah. You know, other, other women and men have done that to me and other boyfriends, you but, know. But you didn't kill them. You didn't get pushed to the point where you know, you couldn't take it anymore. That's that's what we're trying to understand. That's why. Either way, those detectives in Arizona have their case made. But the least you can do for that family is, is give them an answer. Throughout this whole exchange, we've seen Detective Blame, Blaney try to be as kind as possible to Jodie and try to give her every opportunity to come clean, tell the truth, clear her own conscience, right? Jodie so far has refused. When Detective Blaney came back into the room, you could see a marked difference in her attitude. Now she's not swallowing any crap that Jodie is giving her. None of the tears, 
none of the fake um, grief over Travis's death. None of that. She's not having any of it. She knows that Jodie is guilty. Yeah, she knows Jodie is guilty, but the thing is, Jodie doesn't know the meaning of the word truth. No. And even though it's all starting to dawn on her, the amount of serious shit she is in at the moment, I don't think she realises the, the true amount of evidence there is against her, not just physical. No, there's all sorts. Yeah. The, and there's the, actual evidence that she was there. I cannot wait to get into the trial and watch Prosecutor Martinez just absolutely blow her out of the water. Yeah. It's just going to be so much fun. I'm not saying I portray Travis as this, this ugly, horrible person because, you know, I don't know that that's the right thing to do either. But at least let them know that it was a two-way street and it wasn't all your fault. Or, like I said, maybe I'm wrong and maybe it was. Maybe you did plan it from day one and um, carried it out. Watts, we do believe that Jodie had a plan. Yeah. And that plan was put into motion after she found out that Mimi was going to Cancun with Travis instead of her. Now, I think that was the night she planned it. Yeah. Now, we weren't sure whether she actually found out before Travis died that Mimi was going with Travis. But, um... Our expert, our resident expert, Leslie Fortune, tells us that this is so and this enraged her. And Leslie seems to know a lot about this, so we kind of put a lot of stock in, yeah. you know, the advice that she gives and, and the facts that she relates. Um, have a look for her on the comments section. She knows a lot about this case. Anyway, um, we believe that the plan was set into motion when Mimi, when she found out Mimi was going with Travis to Cancun. And it all started when she staged the burglary at her grandparents' house to account for the missing gun. Which has never been found. Which has never been recovered. So that's when we think the plan started germinating. What really tripped her up was her lack of, um, well, after work. She didn't clean up the scene properly. She didn't get rid of all the physical evidence. No, she didn't even get rid of her own physical evidence. No, she didn't. She was not thorough enough in cleaning up. Maybe if she was, maybe if she was as um, attentive to cleaning as Chris Watts was, she might have stood a chance at reasonable doubt. Yeah. But as it was, she just left a treasure trove of, of evidence and clues behind her, didn't she? She did. It was obvious. Yeah. So this was definitely premeditated and she knew exactly what she was doing and she carried it out to the letter she just made a piss poor job of cleaning it up. If his mom and dad were sitting here right now, what would you say to them? If they asked you why it happened, what would you say to them? I don't have an answer for why. I just don't, I don't know why he was killed. I don't know why. I don't know why. Alright. Maybe you 
can't understand why, but what led up to it? What would you say to them? That Because that would help them with the why. If you're struggling with the why within yourself, then what led up to it? Could you explain to his mom and dad what led up to it that would help them understand? saying that to me or are you saying that to his family? To everybody. To his family, to my family. To Travis. There is only one person she is saying sorry to and that's herself. For getting caught. Yeah, she's not saying sorry about what happened to Travis. She doesn't feel the least bit bad about that. She doesn't care about that. Um, she seems to be obsessed with what his family think, though. So I do think that what his family are thinking is very important to her. Whether she cares about it or not, I don't know. If she does, it's purely from a narcissistic point of view. Well, she's not even... Well, she's just pretending. Yeah. Then if you truly are sorry, Jody, clear your conscience and give them an understanding of what led up to it. yourself as the cold-blooded person that they'll be left with unless you give them an understanding. <laughs> I don't want to believe that I was wrong about you. She doesn't want to believe it, but she already knows it. I can see that your tears are real. This, that obviously is nothing that you can fake. Wrong. And I think Detective Blaney knows it. 
Yeah, you can fake tears. Yeah, you can. And for some people, it's very, very easy. For example, we used to belong to an amateur theatre group, didn't we? Yeah. We know people who could turn tears on and off like a tap. Exactly. Yeah. Also, some psychopaths are very, very good at emulating human behaviour, including tears. Like I said, she's a psychopath. Yeah. And Blaney knows this, but I think that she's just saying this to butter Jodie up and to get her to open, open up. up and talk. Yeah. You know, Travis told me that my tears mean nothing. <laughs> I said that one time when we were fighting. How'd that make you feel? Well, I knew they were real. That's all I've had. It just made me. Um, I don't think he, I don't know, it was weird because sometimes he just seemed to have no emotional understanding or depth and then other times he could move himself to cry like that if he wanted to or if he was on stage and it made him, it didn't need to help his speech or whatever. But those were things that he felt deeply about, you know, so we're all different. We all express our emotions differently, and I realized that. Did he know how to push your buttons? We knew how to push each other's buttons. I could make him mad in five seconds. I, you know, I didn't, it's not it's my favorite pastime or anything, but I just knew how to do that, and, and he knew how to make me cry in five seconds. So I think his emotional expression was anger, and mine was just sadness, I guess. Do you know, if I'd met her in real life, I don't think I could last five seconds without getting annoyed. I don't think I could. Is that what happened? Did he push your buttons or you push his buttons? Is that what triggered this whole thing? No, because looking at the pictures, it looked like the, you know you guys were engaged in some sort of intimate um, moment between the two of you. It didn't look like it was all going bad. It looked like, you know, something something happened real quick. And that's the understanding that I was talking about that you could give to the family. So I've just noticed that Blaney has only really got has only really had so far two talking points to, to hit Jodie with. Firstly, um, her image in the media and her the, the perception of people of her through the media, and also giving Travis's family some closure. She's not hit Jodie with any details about the case. She's not tried to probe what Jodie's been doing. I think this is all good strategy. She's sticking to those points. Because she doesn't want Jodie going off on one, and that is all she's interested in. On her giving Tra Travis his family some closure, yeah, and also what actually happened that night, yeah. Um, but also, I think it is she's hammering on these two points because it's going to tire Jodie out, and then when she tags um, Esteban Flores back in, he's going to go in and finish them off, and you know, maybe do the finishing manoeuvre on her himself. And once again, lightning it to a wrestling match. But, you know, who knows? There's obviously a strategy in place. Yeah. Um, but it's just interesting that Blaney's got a completely different style and a completely different line of questioning to Flores. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. And I understand, you know, that's... That's a pretty deep philosophical thing that you'll be, you know, struggling with within yourself. I could, I'm guessing. But you know the factual things that led up to it. Um, and then, you know, people can draw their own conclusions from there. But sitting there silent and not saying anything makes you look like a horrible person.
I mean, obviously you've had other relationships with, you know, ups and downs that never drove you to that point. It was so far you, worse than Travis. So what was it? What was it with Travis that that set you off to such a degree? understand that you're a very private person. Everybody has said that and that's glaringly apparent. But all your business is going to be out in the open right now. So there's really nothing to hide from anymore. You know what I mean? How is it as private as Travis? Are you worried about his reputation? Um, Is that what you're trying to protect here? Yeah, I mean, I'm concerned. I still don't want him. To, I would rather everyone didn't know that that he was um, that we were both violating certain uh, chastity laws continually. That's a it's a very big deal in the church. Yeah. I mean, I know that his bishop knows. He keeps everything private. And, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with our faith, but he, Travis has another bishop now, you know, in the next life. He's working through those things. Why does she keep referring to Travis in present tense? He's dead. Perhaps she thinks that referring to him in the present tense will kind of divert attention away from her. <laughs> Fat chance. So he's got his own path. I don't want his family to, I don't know, I don't think all of his family um, share his faith, or if they do, they're not as involved deeply as he was. So I don't know how they would feel. I'm sure they don't care. They just want to know why. I can't imagine what they're going through. <laughs> so, I mean, at least on some level, you can understand what's going on in their head. The why, the, the why is what we've been talking about. Was this a situation where you guys were involved in an intimate exchange and things got too rough? Is that, is that why the secrecy and the privacy with me today? And what's keeping you from unloading your burden? Is it your own pride? think at this point that your pride matters more than Travis's family's grief? To a narcissist, their own pride is the most important thing. If, not, if it's not the most important thing, it's one of the most important things that they have to preserve their own pride. Oh yeah, they're all big on pride. Yeah, so that's why she's clammed up, because she is a narcissist. You know, what if they don't have a faith base like Travis did? And what if they don't have a spirituality to fall back on to help them through this process? Um, you know, some people can deal with it better when they have their own spiritual roots that they can dig down and hold on to. What if they don't have that? You know, what if they're in more turmoil than... Uh, 
than somebody who did have a faith base. Wouldn't you want to help them out? I mean, you tell me that you're sorry. If I could, I would help them in a heartbeat. Well, you know that you can't bring them back. But you can help them understand. And no matter what you say, it's not going to it's not going to change their love for their son. It's not going to make them dislike their son no matter what happened. But at least they'll have closure. She doesn't want to give Travis's family any closure because it doesn't profit or benefit her in any way. If she wanted to give them any closure, she would have done it by now. Yeah, she would have done. If you're not going to do it for yourself, at least do it for them. If you've already resigned to the fact that your situation is hopeless, why wouldn't you do that for them? Do you know something? Detective Blaney should walk out of that building right now, walk through the neighbourhoods and find the nearest garden gnome, sit down and ask that to confess all of its sins she'd get more empathy and she'd get more of a bloody response than she would from this raisin-eyed old hag that's a good question i think i will Sure. You understand that I have to go in there with you? Okay. So, nice trip to the bog for Jodie, where no doubt she'll probably be relieving herself, but also probably clearing a throat of all the shit from the crap that she's been talking. And she's still talking it now. Yeah. She's not giving an inch, is she? I mean, she probably doesn't know how much evidence there is against her, but she's, you know, she, she's still not giving an inch. Well, she's... she knows about the photos. Yeah, she does. And she still thinks she's going to walk away from this. Yeah. She has got absolutely no chance, mate. So before we took a break, I posed the question to you that you felt was a good question. If your situation, if you see your situation is so hopeless, why wouldn't you at least give the family some closure and some peace of mind as to what happened or why? It's just 
strongly valuing and we have it. If you have any feelings, emotions within you, if you have any goodness in your heart. None of the above, there's only evil. I don't know why you wouldn't do that. Because if you don't, and you don't give them the, the information that they seek for the closure, that makes you a very selfish person. Jodie's continued silence and her refusal to give up anything, not just to help detectives solve the case, but to give Travis family's, Travis's family closure, just goes to show how much of a shit she doesn't give about being thought of as a selfish person. She doesn't. No, not at all. It's all about her. She's a narcissist, but she's also a psychopath. I think she's also on a power trip at the moment because they desperately want this information from her. She feels power over them that she's not giving it to and them. And not only that, she's also in the spotlight. Exactly. Attention is on her. Yeah. Pure, pure narcissism. I think I've been pretty selfish. How have you been selfish? This is always so selfless. He gave me everything that I needed. I needed money and he had it. It was mine. I needed food. I needed to borrow his car. I needed to use the internet because mine was down. I needed to, if I wanted to borrow any books, he had a cool library, more audio books. One time he helped me with my creepy legal business and he doesn't benefit monetarily in the least from it. And I would help him too with that each month because you have to qualify for his position. It's a monthly qualification. Sometimes I would just help him with computer stuff. But I think I'm selfish. And we just met in Ehrenberg when I lived in Southern California. So we could just rent a hotel room and make out the whole weekend. And, um, whatever. But we drove to go see a movie and... Here we go. Another trip on the Cuckoo Express to Irrelevant Land to play around in Jodie's little marshmallow garden. She's gonna try, but the, but the detective Blaney will pull her back. There was this boy. Standing with the sign. <laughs> he pulls over in his BMW and pulls down his window and said, Are you hungry? And she said, Yeah. So we turned around and went to the Wendy's right next to the hotel. <laughs> and he got her this triple decker and the biggie fries or whatever it's called and the biggest drink that they have <laughs> and gave it to her. Bloody hell, my heart is breaking. <laughs> he always did stuff like that. I 
We don't doubt that Travis was a generous person and that they had a good heart. By all accounts, that's what everybody says. He was yeah. a good man. But what the hell has this got to do with giving his family some closure? Why the hell is she talking about this? This hasn't got anything to do with it. No, she she's quite happy to elaborate on stories that have nothing to do with the point. But she clams up whenever the point the point is specifically addressed, and it's starting to get really annoying. Well, she knows that if she says anything about that, she'll incriminate herself. Exactly. Where did things go wrong, Judy? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this is your chance to make at least something right. Even if it's on a small scale, it's a big deal to his folks. <laughs> Did they already know I'm in custody? I'm sure they do. Should they feel better about that much? But they still need closure. I mean, just because you're in custody doesn't give them any closure. Is this something that you planned from day one? Is this something that you wish you could take back? I wish I could change it. Now that's actually a really interesting question that Detective Blaney just asked. Could, if you know could she does she wish that she it hadn't happened could she go back in time and stop herself from doing it i don't think so because she had a week to stop herself from doing it she premeditated this for a week i at least. reckon if she could go back in time she would only do herself not getting caught she'd go back yeah. and cover all the traps yeah she'd go back she wouldn't put the digital camera in the in the washing machine she'd, she'd get rid of the sd she'd card clean the place she'd up completely get rid of the bloody handprint she'd get rid of all the evidence she'd probably leave travis just lying there yeah she would she can rewind the clock what would you do if you rewind the clock i would have done everything i could to prevent it If your fate is inevitable in your mind, why wouldn't you give the family closure? Decision. 
If it were my son, I would want all of the information I could so that I could make some sense of it. Is this something that is so horrific in your mind that you don't even want to think that you could be capable of such a thing? So, you know, that's the person that I was talking about, the person that is scared and remorseful and didn't want any of this to happen. So I don't think I was wrong, Jody. This is your opportunity to make right on some of your selfishness. And let the family decide how they're gonna deal with that information and how they're gonna use it. So far, Detective Blaney has been very patient. Very. I don't think I could keep my patience for that long. No, no. I mean, she's got to be professional, and she's got to kind of keep her cool, but there's nothing to stop her showing some impatience with Jodie and trying to, you know, press her a little bit. I think she's just trying to get her to uh, relax and open up a little bit, so she's... That doesn't seem to be working, though, at the moment, does it? Every time she comes to a point, she clams up. Yeah, she does. But she talks on for on a lot about things that aren't even relevant. Yeah, that, that don't matter. And why should they have any more suffering than they've already had? In your religion, and forgive me for my ignorance about it. It's mostly just a Christian based religion. Do they believe that um, the truth shall set you free? Um, I think, yeah, because it has to do with repentance. Mm -hmm. And if it's just a Christian base, theology, then I would say they would. I think it even says that in the Doctrine and Covenants, which is another part of our scriptures. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember if I just read that the other day. Have you been giving much thought to that? Um... Not within the last 24 hours. I don't really be thinking about a lot, except... I'll tell you something. There is a huge difference in the Jodi areas that we are watching now and the Jodi areas that we watched in part two. That Jodi areas in part two was very confident, very bright, very chirpy. Very chatty. Yeah, and didn't have ounce one of remorse or any sort of emotion um, with regards to what happened to Travis. What we're seeing here is somebody who appears to be, you know, quite emotionally drained. It could be the pressure of the last 
24 hours of questioning that she's had. Yeah, that can be pretty draining. Yeah. It could be the fact that the net is closing on her and she's her ways out are starting to look more and more limited. Yeah. I fully believe that the tears are not for Travis and are not for Travis's family. They're for her. They're for her own self. Yeah. Basically, because she knows now there's no way out. Yeah. So it's very interesting the huge difference that we see um, in terms... And it could be that she kind of felt she was on familiar ground, as we said earlier, with Detective Flores. Detective Blaney is a completely different kettle of fish. She's a woman. And she hasn't, and she hasn't really spoken about Travis much. But he, all she's been going on about is that night. Yeah, and his family and yeah. getting some sort of closure for them. So yeah, it's just very interesting seeing the difference between, you know, the the Jody of the day before in part two and the Jody of this day, which is part three. Um, they're like night and day, aren't they? She's a snivelling wreck. Yeah. But is it all an act? Could be. Could be an act. Could be just for show, for Detective Blaney, for the camera. Who knows? This is Jodie Aries we're talking about. Rule nothing out. Yeah. You are the only person that has the information that the family seeks. They don't seek, you know, crime scene information. They, they already, they will already have that. They seek something that is on a much deeper level. It's an emotional level. And you are the only person that can help them with that. saying whoever did this was so angry. Then what were you? Were you scared? jealous I remember feeling jealous when we were together because this one time especially when he was letting this drunk girl hang all over him and he wasn't doing anything to stop it he was just supporting her and holding her and like right in front of me like what are you doing but I didn't want to make a scene you know all our friends were there so I just left I felt more sad and that there were of course feelings of more feelings of insecurity because it made me wonder what are your deeper philosophies if you think that's okay and we're in our relationship together? And to him it was harmless. Um, and I realized that he didn't mean anything by it. And we talked about it. So I remember feeling jealous about that. That was, that was almost a year and a half ago. So if it's not jealousy and it's not anger, then what was it? This whole interview is like a bloody washing cycle, isn't it? Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, 
rinse and repeat. She has a brain fart and spews a load of information which is clearly no use or no help or no answer to what Detective Blaney is asking her. And then when Blaney tries to bring her back down to earth from Marshmallow Land, she clams she, up again. Yeah, she completely it just doesn't say anything. And it's going around and around in circles and there are great long gaps between Blaney talking huge amounts of silence and then Blaney talking again. She is giving up nothing. All she wants to give up is inconsequential and irrelevant information. And you can see why people consider her one of the most annoying people in the world. Yeah. Have you been asking yourself that same question? Is it that you're having a hard time figuring it out within yourself? Was it fear? So if it was fear, then what is it that you're afraid of? Or were afraid of? Are you looking back and trying to remember that day? I'm just trying to remember everything. Like things that happened or conversations. Like I just. What do you remember about that day that would help the family understand? Did you at least start out enjoying each other's company that day? She simply is not budging from the I wasn't in Mesa that day alibi, is she? No, but they clearly know that, know that she was. Yeah, I mean, she's got at least 10 hours unaccounted for all this time. She spent in Cloud Cuckoo Land or wherever the hell she claimed she was, right? The photographic evidence shows she was in Mesa. Yeah. So why is she still holding on to her supposed alibi that she was nowhere near the place? She's just not giving herself up. I'll tell you something. If she were a cake, she'd be fruit and she'd be nutty. Did you go there with the intention to kill him?
No. And what was your intention? Did you mean for that to happen? I think I've thought of another reason for her tears and that is I've been trying to put myself inside her head and what she would be thinking right now right and the one thing the one question that I believe she is asking herself at the moment is why don't they believe me that is why I think partly she is crying it's frustration that neither Flores nor Blaney, nor the full team behind them believe a word she says. Because they've got all the evidence yeah. to prove otherwise. But, you see, to her, her narcissism means more. Well, yeah, that's true. Her need to be thought of as an innocent um, person Stand in on. all of this, and you've got the wrong person, I was nowhere near. Her need for that is greater. So, I think part of her frustration is, why don't they believe me? That's just what I feel when I'm trying to put myself... I, it's not a pleasant place to be in, um, old raisin head's head. But, you know, I'm trying to put myself in there and that's the question that keeps occurring to me. It's not going to make any difference for me, but it would make a difference for you, and it would make a difference for Travis's family, because I think I'm very safe in my assumption that they're seeking closure, and the more information that they have to understand why will give them the closure that they seek. I think that you want to do that. I can see that in you. They deserve that. They do deserve that. <sighs> if you have a hard time expressing yourself, you know, that's okay and understandable in this situation. This isn't an everyday, average, normal situation. <laughs> I 
can you see? See things better in writing. Okay? If you would let me help you, I can help you with that expression. But you have to be willing. And you can still write him a letter. Once again, this is part three, so we're more or less still at the beginning of this case. We're not sure if she actually wrote him a letter, but I'm guessing personally that if she did, it would be very, very carefully worded so as not to incriminate herself. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm not sure whether she writes a letter now or whether she's taken back to her cell to write it. Um, all I do know is that this um, interrogation continues way beyond Detective Blaney's presence in the room and goes back to Detective Flora. So whether she writes a letter or not, absolutely no idea. No, me let, neither. Let us know in the comments. The least you can do is give the family something. I don't know how many times I can say that enough. You say that you didn't mean for that to happen that day. You nodded your head no when I asked you that. And I believe that. But in order for it to be believable, there has to be some understanding as what to what led up to it. Was he expecting you to come over that day? <laughs> he wanted me to. I told him I wasn't going to. So was it a surprise that you actually showed up? Is it a matter of you not understanding how things got so carried away? Okay, so she did not answer uh, Detective Blaney, Blaney's previous question. She asked, and was it a surprise when you actually turned up? And she just went, she clammed up. But she did answer her previous question, which was... Um, did you plan to go over that day? And she said he wanted me to, but I told him I couldn't go over. But she's still holding on to her story that she didn't, you know, go over. And I know I've mentioned this previously, but why is she still holding on to it when they've got photographic proof? It just, it doesn't make sense to me. It's the way her head works. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but it's the narcissism, it's the psychopathy yeah it's everything yeah that it would end up in a situation like that I don't know. or did you go there with the intention to kill him Do you want to leave here today with those questions unanswered for Travis's mom and dad? It's 
before my dad passed away. But I know what you mean about saying that to me, like, trivial. When you say that, in my mind, I go, I understand, because they're all together. I see. So who, who slept behind his grandmother? She raised him. <laughs> he has a lot of brothers and sisters. I think he has three sisters, maybe four. Tanisha, Samantha. I don't remember. And he has some brothers. A big brother and a little brother. So what about his grandma and siblings? Do you want to walk away from here today without giving them something to understand? I don't think anything would please them all. Agreed. sealed in your mind, why wouldn't you give them that? And at the same time, help yourself out. Are you the cold-hearted person that everybody thinks you are? No. No, not cold-hearted. Then what are you? Please accept our apologies for the on-screen graphics. They're on the original source video. What is your weakness? Kind of embarrassed about it. I can understand that. We're all human. We all have weaknesses and embarrassing things that we wouldn't want anybody to reveal. What's your weakness? I'm guessing it's having water splashed over her. Has a tendency to melt some people, doesn't it? It does, actually. It's stupid and it doesn't really have anything to do with this too much. It's something I'm working through. Do you have problems with your temper no. or anger issues? No, it's nothing like that. I mean, I sometimes I I yell, but nothing like I wouldn't go as far as saying anger. I think it's just because I come from a family that yells at everyone. That's how they communicate. Um, I think they're just sort of desensitized to it. Like after I moved out, I was away for a while, so when I come back to visit, it's like you don't need to yell. I'm standing right here. Or she'll my mom will yell at my brother. Like he's standing right there. You don't need to yell. And she's like, well, he doesn't listen if I don't yell. And the thing is, it's because he's become desensitized to her yelling. So until she yells, he's like, okay. Yeah. So it's maybe it's something like that, but not anger. And I've been able to check that a lot in my yelling because it doesn't, it's not a nice way to communicate in my opinion and it doesn't really help anything. So all of that was basically word salad. Yeah. But 
did you notice how the tears totally disappeared halfway through and she was the bubbly, chirpy Jody oh. just for a very brief time. And then she went back to turning back on the waterworks to a very small extent. This is someone who can turn them on and off like a tap. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is the, Her tears are not real, no matter what Detective Blaney said earlier on. Those are not real tears. No, they're not. And she is playing a very, 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 very well-constructed game, in her opinion, I think. So how could things go so wrong? You know, I, I'm not understanding. If it's not jealousy, it's not an anger problem. You said you were afraid, or you nodded at least that you were afraid. But I'm not sure what you were afraid of. may not be trivial to his parent or his grandmother, his brothers and sisters. any information that they could have to help understand, you know, who you are and what transpired that day is going to help them. Now, you've got to admire Detective Blaney. She's been very persistent. She's she... trying everything she knows to get her to speak. Well, more than that, she's trying to appeal to Jodie's humanity. But at this time, I don't think Jodie has any humanity left. She hasn't. Because, I mean, let's face it, she's been put under, what, for now, probably about four, four or five hours of questioning, intense questioning by Detective Flores and by Detective Blaney, right? It took Chris Watts 45 minutes to crack, right? She's standing up, she, she's holding up a lot better than he did, and she's kind of sticking to her guns. So I think that her humanity departed. Uh, she's sticking to her guns for now. Yeah. But, but she's got a crack soon. Well, she's going to flip and flop her stories. We know that, don't well, we? Well, yeah. And that's going to be interesting to watch, isn't it, when that happens? It won't bring their son back, but it will help them understand. And I don't understand why you wouldn't do that for them. Because you obviously care. I'm not asking you to make excuses for yourself. Because I don't think you're the type of person that would do that. But I'm asking you to do something for somebody else. It's 
somebody that deserves to know. Was it about your relationship with him that went so wrong that would end up like that? So Detective Blaney has been in that room allowing for toilet breaks about two hours with, in total, yeah. with Jody Arias. And even though the questioning has kind of been streamlined onto a couple of topics, it hasn't been as cutting as I'd hoped it would be. It, ha it hasn't been as direct as I'd hoped it would be. It's Blaney trying to appeal to Jody Arias' better nature and the top and bottom of it is, Jodie Arias doesn't have a better nature. Then, sh then Detective Blaney should go on to, on to the attack. Well, maybe she's saving that. Maybe she's buttering her up for Detective Flores yeah. when she tags him back into the ring. You know what maybe I mean? Maybe he'll yeah. do it. Maybe. And if that wasn't your intention, then what was? You say that, you know, you said at one point when I posed the question to you about why you wouldn't do that for the family, and you said that was a good question, and you think you will. Are you sure I will? Well, now is your time. This is the opportunity that I'm trying to give you. I understand and I appreciate that. Then what's keeping you from doing it? I think I just need to sort through things still because I'm just not sure. I deserve the right answers. They deserve. They deserve to know what happened. You have those answers. You may not know the why within yourself, but you have those answers. You know what happened. She's not going to do it because she's stalling for time. You can still write them a letter when you figure out within yourself, you know, some of the, the questions that you're struggling with. But in the meantime, you can let them know what happened the facts of what happened. I don't have all the details. What details do you have? <laughs> Was he happy to see you when you got there that day? Or did he appear happy? Or was he angry that you showed up? So I'm going to correct myself from earlier. When I said um, that she was sticking with her story about how she was nowhere near Mesa that day, that's actually incorrect. She hasn't stuck with that story. She hasn't said a damn word. She's not offered any defence not that I can remember throughout this whole video of where she was that day. No, she hasn't. She's not told Detective Blaney where she was that day. She's not confirmed or denied that she was... She's just clammed up. So I just wanted to correct that. 
um, she didn't stick with the story she just hasn't said a word about it whenever Blaney has a, has broached it she's just clammed up and said no well she knows that she 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 needs to be careful what she says in case she's incriminates herself. yeah exactly i think she probably seen enough cop and law shows on the telly to, to kind of know that she should keep her mouth shut yeah Is there any way I can see some of those photos? What would you do with them if you could see them? Just look at them. Do you think it would help you? I don't know if it would help me or... Or... I don't know. Maybe... Maybe it would... I don't know. I just think that... I don't know. Well, I know you can't tell me that you're not struggling in your mind, you know, and thinking about what happened over and over and over again, at least what you can remember. Okay, so it would be easy to completely demonize Jodi Arias here, right? But what I'm going to try and do just for this bit is play devil's advocate. Jodi Arias may be telling the truth when she says that she can't remember all the details of what happened right because she's just more or less said that that may be true because when you're in a highly tense traumatic situation and you do something like that the, the chances are you won't remember periods of doing it you will be in retrospect when you're driving off afterwards you, you you'll be in such a high state and afterwards when you've had time to think about it you'll blank out there will be bits that you will not remember right so it would be easy to demonize her and say she wants to get the pictures to get off on them, right? Maybe the possibility does exist. I'm not saying it's likely, again, just playing devil's advocate. But the possibility exists that she wants to see the pictures so that she can get a clear idea in her mind of what actually took place. That's kind of me playing devil's advocate. Now, personally, her wanting to see the photos... Like I say, it's easy to demonise her, and I, a part of me does think she'd get off on it. But a part of me also thinks that she would want to get, you know, what she'd done to Travis in her head, just for the future, for future reference, in case she's questioned about it. No. There's only one reason she wants to see those pictures. And it's been proven with other with, even with serial killers looking at the pictures of the victims like Gacy did yeah I don't agree with, with that, that that she should look at them because no. that is her handiwork Yeah, what she has done like I said you know I, I believe that a part of her wants to admire her handiwork you know because serial kill, certainly serial killers like to take trophies even people who've only killed one person sometimes take something away with them yeah Maybe she does want to admire her handiwork, but maybe she wants to get the full extent of Travis's injury so that if she is confronted with something later on, either in questioning or in the trial, she can think back and think, well, this is what his shoulder looked like, this is what his back looked like, whatever. Yeah. You know, there's obviously some motive as to why she wants to look at the pictures. So I'm just trying to examine all the angles, you know, as to why that would happen. Let us know in the comments. Uh, we're just speculating. You can help me understand at least what led up to it.
I don't think that you're a bad person. I think things got out of control and you don't understand why. And I don't think that you're gonna feel good about yourself until you unburden yourself and give the family some closure. Because at this point, you know, what else do you have? What else do they have? What have you got to lose? What are you lost to me? Then do something selfless. You know something, I'm quite tempted to subtitle this video, The Jodie Arias Snotfest. <laughs> Do something selfless, that quality that you admired in Travis. Show his family that at least you have that within you. You know, even though Travis was a real jerk, sometimes he really cared a lot about me. <sighs> he called it, um... Like, I, like, like, I had a reserve account, so to say he tried to paint a picture was where I had so many good things that we had done and shared and that I had done for him that even if I did something bad, you know, it's like my kid withdrawal, but you still have a positive balance. So he obviously saw that good within you. His friends thought he was blind. Well, two friends in particular, not everyone. <sighs> was he? Oh, go ahead. He wasn't blind though, he was just, you know, we were just friends. Sorry, what were you gonna say? I'm just going to ask you if he was happy to see you that week, that day. And once again, she's clammed up.
when asked if Travis was happy to see her that day. Exactly. She doesn't want to say because it'll incriminate her. Yeah. And have you noticed that during the previous day's interview in part two with Detective Flores and today in the interview with Detective Blaney, she keeps stressing that she didn't think of him as, as, as hers and that they were just friends. She was obsessed with him. She was fixated with him. She's Obviously, she's not going to admit that. Well, no, because... <laughs> yeah, but she keeps stressing that they were just friends. And I'm just dying to see Prosecutor Juan Martinez pick that apart in court. Yeah. That looked like you're, you're saying, yeah, he was. No, I didn't see that. Okay. He was always happy to see me, though. I'm trying to think. Were you happy to see him? You at least know that. I don't believe that you went there with the intention to hurt him. Maybe he did. How is seeing those pictures again going to help you? I just thought maybe it would help me piece a few things together. And what is it that you're trying to piece together? Um, I don't know. There's, there's also a bit of morbid curiosity, I think. Bing! I just wanted to see a picture of him. He showed me a good picture of him yesterday. Is that the one with him in the shower? Yeah, he had water all over his face or something. You took a nice picture of him. He would never let me take pictures of him in a shower. He was, you know, despite our intimacy, he was really private about his showers. You know, like he had a room. I don't think you've seen the room, but it was here. There's double doors here leading into the room, mm -hmm. walk-in closet here, and a hallway, sort of short hall here that went this way. And there was a bathtub here, a shower here, and the bathroom here, full enclosure. And so if he was taking a shower, you couldn't see if he were in the bedroom unless you walked down the hall. And I never went in the bathroom when he would shower because he was just private about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like we were a married couple ever. We had a time when we did something and then after that it was, yeah, we weren't a couple, so. Are you saying that those pictures were taken without his consent? I'm just saying that whoever took those pictures must have, I mean, it's hard to imagine because I got pictures of him once shaving and that he was already weird about that. Well, Jody, when you say things like that, it's obvious to me that you don't want to do the right thing for the family. You don't want to um, unburden yourself. You don't want to give them closure. Um, and you're jerking my chain. Now that's a bit more like it. Because 
there's no doubt, and I've already told you, there's no doubt in my mind or anybody else's mind that you were responsible for his death. And I don't appreciate my chain being jerked. I don't um, appreciate you thinking that I'm some sort of fool. Well, the detective said he has pictures of me. Mm -hmm. I've seen those pictures. They were taken the same day. Well, certainly not the same time. Within the same time frame. Now, did you hear that? Yeah. Um, not, certainly not at the same time. That's the first time she has made any sort of admission about being there. Is that admissible in court? I don't know. Um, is that an admission? I don't know, but that is the first step towards acknowledging that she was actually there. Yeah. Um, and I think Detective Blaney picked up on it as well. Exactly. <laughs> And I, you know, to tell you the truth, I, I think that, uh, I think I've done all I can here. I was hoping to, you know, be able to relay some sort of information or message to the family, because they deserve it. And, you know, you, you have the power there, you have the control. You're the only one that can give that. And I'm tired of playing games. I'm tired of skirting around it. I guess I just leave here today and leave them with the image that they have of you. I don't know what else. There's nothing else that I can do. I thought that it would be easier for you to talk to a woman. Especially about the, you know, I mean, this was a very in in intimate um, incident. And it would be easier to say what you need to say to a woman. Sometimes it is. It's not as threatening. But unless you're willing to give me something something to help you with and I can help you, you know, walk down that path and remember those details, then I can't do anything for you. And you need to decide whether you're going to give that family closure or leave them with the picture that they have of you and wondering why their son died. That's it, that's the bottom line. That's what you need to decide. After today, things are gonna go so fast for you, you're gonna be totally out of control of the situation. The wheels of justice will start turning. see that you want to do that that's clear I can see that I understand that you're afraid and that you're horrified uh, about that person within you that could do something like that but it happened and it's a done deal and you did at least you can do is tell the family how it happened so they can understand why two kinds of hope of that happening Bob and none and Bob died years ago are you going to do that for them today or not I'd, I'd like to um, um, then what's holding I'd you like back I'd like to begin something like a, I don't know I just because I don't know what to say to them. Well, let's throw, throw a few things out. You said you were sorry. Yeah, sorry seems meaningless. Of course. 
yours. Unless you back it up with something else as to why you're sorry, you're right. Give him something, Jody. I mean, did you guys get into an argument that day? Um, was there was there some sort of fight? I mean, help him understand. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, do you think you're going to get this opportunity again to sit down and just have a free-form discussion? Oh, probably not. Unless it's with the lawyers. When you say free-form, you mean like, like in this room? Yeah, just exchanging, communicating. Okay, something's just occurred to me. Um, there may be another reason for her, her whole reticence. Try saying that when you're pissed. Her whole reticence, right, to give, give any information. Maybe she wants the court experience. Maybe she wants to go to court. Maybe she wants to be in the media spotlight. Well, she'd uh, have a lot more attention on her. Yeah. And that's what she craves. I don't really think... That she, you know, if she does want to be in the media spotlight, I don't think she cares how she's portrayed, as long as people are talking about her. Well, yeah, because when you do a, a crime like that, people are gonna talk about yeah, it. Yeah, maybe she's that narcissistic and she's thinking that far ahead. Who knows? There's not going to be any situation or place that's going to make it any easier for you. This is as good as it gets for you right now. Yesterday, Detective Flores asked me if I wanted to see those pictures, and I told him no. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to help you? I don't know. Well, I tell you what, let me um, check and uh, see if we can get you some pictures to look at. And a whole binder of stuff. Maybe mm -hmm. they're all pictures, I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of pictures. Jody, Detective Flores um, has the binder with those pictures, and he's not, um, 
he's not here in our office right now, but um, I put a call in um, to try and find him and, and get him back here. He's, he's still in town, he's just not here. Would you rather talk to him? Um, if you do, you know, that's, that's fine, and I'm sure that he'd be willing to talk with you again. Or would you rather continue talking with me? It's up to you. Um, I don't, I don't really have a preference, I guess. Um, well, we don't have unlimited time. You, you don't have unlimited time. Um, we need to get you back across the street, and um, there's other things that, that we need to work on. So, you know, the, the time is now to decide whether you're going to talk to me or not, and whether you're going to give the family some relief that I've talked to you about. Well, either you do or you don't. You know, actions, um, actions speak louder than words at this point. I was one of Travis's favorite sayings. If you really want to do it, then do it. You, you, it's not going to benefit you or them to wait to do it. I don't know what it is that's going on inside your head right now. I don't know whether you're weighing the odds, um, you know, trying to figure out how you can save your own skin here. Um. We said the same thing earlier and we agree. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not interested in saving my skin. Then, then what are you interested in? Um, well, I am definitely interested in in giving his family closure. I'm also interested in maybe a little bit of closure for myself. I got a flat tire on the way to his funeral and was not able to go. Did you notice that? Closure for myself. She's only thinking of herself again. Yeah, I did notice that. But it also begs the question, why does she want closure for herself? Because it's a few, well, in fact, it's over a month since it happened. Uh, she doesn't seem to be feeling any remorse over what she's done. She gave herself closure ages ago. Um, I was in weed, and my flight was in Sacramento, and it was early, early in the morning, so there were no tire places open, and I missed my flight. And even if I had driven as fast as I could get there and didn't get pulled over, I still would have made it on time for a spoon. Don't you think that it's going to make just a little bit of difference inside yourself? as far as that closure goes, if you know that the family at least has something? Yeah. If anyone deserves closure anyway, it's been on me. But I think that's kind of why I wanted to um, see those pictures. I don't know if that will help or not. I don't see how it would help. I think it would, um, you know, if anything, make you more upset. <laughs> I mean, you, you know what happened, you know how it transpired, you know the end result and what the end result looked like. Maybe it'll help me process, I don't know. Can you help me process? Is she taking the piss? Yeah. God, what, what possible motive would Detective Blaney have to help her process anything? All she has done for the past two hours is lead Detective Blaney around her famous little marshmallow garden again jodie already knows what the crime scene looked like yeah how travis lo looked like because she was the one who bloody did it yeah yeah um i know i played devil's advocate earlier but there i can see absolutely no reason for her to have those pictures you can at least until you get to the point of you know you're processing um you know the pictures and so forth you can at least talk about 
the good things that happened that day and what your intentions were You know, maybe you can't bear to talk about the actual act itself. But you can at least talk about the events that led up to it. Happy or sad. There had to have been some happy because I saw all of those photos. And if you're not going to do that today with me right now, I'm just going to send you back across the street <sighs> because we've been in here for a while and I don't have, you know, the entire day. I guess my patients are running a little thin. Do you not trust what I'm going to do with this information when you give it? Well, um, I don't know. I mean, it's not that I distrust you. But not because I don't think you're not trustworthy. It's not that. If you give me a specific message to give to them, I promise you that I will relay it in the way that, in the context of what you put it. But I can't do it without any information, without the information that you're holding. A grieving family who really, really want answers. There is absolutely no way she's going to give them those answers. If she was going to, she would have already done it. Yeah, yeah. We are dealing with someone who is highly manipulative, incredibly narcissistic, and very, very cold. A very, very cold fish. Exactly. So therefore, you know, if that's how we leave it, I'm not going to say anything to them. And they'll be left with, you know, whatever thoughts they have right now. And if you think you're feeling grief over this whole incident, think about how they feel. For once, think about somebody else the turmoil that they're going through, that that family is going through. And every time you see a family struggling with this, they always want to know why. Why was my son's life taken? Why was my grandson's life taken? Everybody wants to know why. And maybe you don't have that why, but you certainly have the events that led up to it, and then they can make their own decision as to why. But the time is now. You won't have another opportunity like this. This is still early. And if you want to talk to Detective Flores as opposed to me, you know, you can do that. It, like I said, I thought it would be easier for you to talk to a woman who could relate to some of those feelings.
But if you want to go back across the street right now, just let me know. I kind of do want to talk to him because he has been in contact with their fa with Travis's family a lot. Okay. I don't know if that would make any difference, but I know that he already talks to them on a regular basis. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure that, you know, he has a somewhat of a relationship with them. I'll, um, I had them put in a call, so I'll go see if he's... Yeah, I'm not trying to stall or anything, but I've got to go to the bathroom again. Can we go? Yeah. Thanks. So, not a lot of progress made in that. In many ways it was very frustrating to watch because she just sat there like a cold stone statue for most of it, didn't she? She just didn't want to give anything away. No, she was cold. She was complete, with the exception of the parts when she was crying or emulating crying as I rather think of it. Yeah. She was just cold. She didn't want to provide that family with the answers they needed or with the events that led up to what happened. It was always about her. Yeah. About her her feelings and uh, yeah. her closure. She mentioned nothing about Travis or his family. And any opportunity she could find to go off kilter like she did in part two with Detective Flores, she took. Yeah. Um, but it ultimately led her nowhere and to be honest with you I don't blame Detective Blaney for losing her patience at the end of it because you know she had the patience of a saint to sit through all the crap that she did. I would have lost it way before with her. Yeah well the same day uh, later on in the day uh, Jodie Arias talks to Detective Flores again and that's going to constitute part four we'll be providing commentary for that. Yes we will. Uh, can we all say to you, all of you who are with us now at maybe like the three hour uh, 17, 18 mark, as far as we know, thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, thank you very much to our coffee supporters and also to our YouTube fam. We've had a few new members of our fam, haven't we? So Yes, thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. We're going to be doing some exclusive live streams and some videos coming up for you, so please keep watching. Um, but... Um, part four will will be out pretty soon we'll start working on it pretty soon uh, please leave us some feedback let us know what you think of this particular uh, episode let us know what you think of Jodie Arias uh, let me let us know what you think of her complete lack of empathy and the detective who had to sit there through yeah. it all but we thank you so much for for watching this please do take care of yourselves please look after each other and we love you Bye. Bye.